I think we'll start by um, talking about the genesis of this movie and starting with the play. Um, but I'll start with him first because did you see the play before you um, decided to commit to the movie? Well, I mean, had you seen the play just in the course of your life? Yeah, yeah, I I'd, I'd saw opening night, I believe, because I remember oh, opening seeing, night. seeing wow. John at the party after, uh, when it was on Broadway, not at MTC. Uh, and then I saw it again because a friend of mine was understudying Brian O'Byrne, I wanted to also see him when he went on. Wow. And so I saw it twice and, you know, was incredibly impressed, you know, by it. But also, the, it had had an early reading at uh, Labyrinth Theater Company's Summer Intensive, which wasn't the first reading or anything, but it had a reading, and I remember people talking about it after that and saying how special it was. So. Was it a difficult play for you to write? Was it a, it was a, I mean, it's obviously something from your past to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. Was that, did that make it harder or easier? No. Uh, you know, I mean, people say, how long did it take you to write the play about any play or whatever? And you, know, you say, I mean, it took me probably five weeks to write the play. Five uh, weeks. And, uh, or you could say, it took me my whole life to write the play. <laughs> and and uh, one is more true than the other. You know, one statement's more true than the other. But was it difficult to come to the point where you could write this play? Because obviously you'd written many other plays. Was this an incident in your life that you, or a part of your life that you had sort of put to the back of your mind to sort of have a moment when you'd be ready to, to deal with it or to come to well, it? Well, I always knew you know, that I had this particular education with this uh, order of nuns called the Sisters of Charity who wear these peculiar Victorian black bonnets. And I always knew that was kind of a good costume. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I, you know, I had it filed away as you know one of the few good costumes that I actually knew anything about the people in those costumes, uh, and uh, and that I knew a lot of. I'd been with them for eight years, and so I really knew that world quite well. Uh, but I had no particular reason to write a play about it. And then um, uh, I got an idea. I was in rehearsal with a play and we were on a break and I was sitting staring at the stage with a, an actor and out of nowhere I said, uh, I think I want to write a play called Doubt. <laughs> and he said, well, what's it about? And I said, that's all I got. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but then within a, a couple of weeks, I, uh, though I remembered those nuns and I thought, oh, it'll be about those, it'll be about those nuns that I had. And I thought, well, that's just anthropology. You know, it's, <laughs> I, and so you know, so that's not enough. And then I thought about uh, uh, that they had suspected a priest of wrongdoing, of having an improper relationship with a child. And I thought that's a little topical. That's a little ripped from the headlines. And I, I, I don't want to do that. And but that didn't mean I didn't want to do it. It just means I didn't have the thing, the sort of extra thing. And then I thought of this black mother and the, of, the, of the only black child in the school. And I'd been in a school where there'd been only one black kid. And I'd always thought, what's it like to be that kid? Uh, and when I thought about her and put that together with other events from my own past, I thought, that's a play. That's a play. That, that's a play I would write. And then very shortly after having that thought, I just sat down and wrote the whole play. Do you have a certain, I'm sorry. Mm. Oh. <laughs> no, no. I was like, yes, that's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed that. Because <laughs> I've been in a lot of the time, and actually every time, I'm like, I didn't know that. Like, I, I, there's still more to learn. Do you have a do you have, did you have a, um, do you have a particular process? Do you start with the end and then go back to the beginning, or do you have a? No, I, I start on the first page. <laughs> I know, but do you know the end? I mean. The, don't look at me like I'm crazy. Do you know the end? The end? The, 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 Actually, often I, when, no, but you know, you sometimes that people have to know the ending. I think Eugene O'Neill, in fact, said that you have to know the ending before you can. John Irving said that once, I remember. Yeah. I, I think that that's often Thank true. Thank you. Thank you for backing that's, me up. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I feel better now. I think, that, I think that's often true because, in other words, if you have a target that you're headed towards, yes. it provides a, a narrative propulsion and tautness that you might not, not, why, might not otherwise achieve. Uh, uh, did I know the end at the beginning? I honestly don't recall. <laughs> well, that's good. 
But you know, I do start at the beginning and go straight forward towards, towards the end. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you act from the beginning to the end. <laughs> oh, that, well, I, that's different. That is different. Yeah, exactly. I'm curious. Do you well, think actually, about... The, when I did the... When I did the... You know, I wrote the play, and then we went into rehearsals, and we uh, uh, did the first reading of the play, which is always a good... You can get a good take on that. You know, you, you can get a good feel... Because people are very good at... Actors are really good at doing cold readings for some reason. A lot of actors. And so they did this cold reading, a uh, first reading of the play, Cherry Jones and Brian F. O'Byrne and Heather Golden Hirsch and Adrian Lennox. And I watched it and I went, oh, the second to last scene is the strongest scene in the play. That will not do. <laughs> uh, and uh, this, the last scene was very strong. This, uh, the, and I, uh, oh, actually, the, 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 the scene between the Mrs. Miller, the black mother, and the, and the, and the uh, older nun, was pl I knew from the reading that it was the strongest scene, and that the confrontation be the, between the priest and the principal was very good, but it was just a little less strong. And I went home and I rewrote the last scene and put another turn mm -hmm. in it to get it where it needed to be so that the thing played right, so that it played as the piece of music that it wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. You were working primarily in the theater. Was there a moment when you thought, I will adapt this for the movies, or was it, did you wait till it was successful, or was there, did it always seem like it could be a movie to you? Was no, there... no, I had no thought of making it a movie. Uh, Scott Rudin, came to me after the play was very Scott successful. Scott Rudin is a, pr a producer. And he was one of the producers on the play, and he's sort of an anomaly in American movie making. He is sort of the free-floating studio. Uh, and uh, he makes uh, this sort of uh, uh, more intellectual properties, uh, like The Hours or uh, many, many, many other movies. Uh, and uh, he came to me and he said, uh, and, and actually what happened is, that, you know, 18 years ago I directed a movie called Joe Versus the Volcano. And uh, after I directed this Which movie. Which I like, yes, you can clap. Right. And, uh, right after you wrote this script called Moonstruck. And, and you know, it, it, the movie, I did Joe Versus the Volcano and, and, and you know, a lot of people didn't like it and then there were people that liked it, but it was definitely, you know, the movie industry was like not sure what to do with it. Rudin uh, came to me back then and said, I, you know, I like the movie and I'd like to, let's do a movie together. Mm -hmm. And I said, I just don't feel like it. I don't feel like <laughs> it. So 18 years later, Scott came to me and he said, you know, I think Doubt should be a movie and I, I think you should direct it. And I said, I think you're right. <laughs> and that was sort of my and Scott's 18 year brief journey. The central premise of the movie, or one of the premises of the movie, is this question of whether or not this priest has, in fact, done something untoward with a student. And it's a really fascinating premise that, that keeps the action, it becomes almost like a melodrama, in a sense. I like melodrama. Yeah, I, I like melodrama, too. And I think, it, I think it's really, it becomes fascinating in terms of the movie. But I also think that the question then becomes the question is whether he did it or whether he didn't do it isn't so interesting to me as the fact that there's that, you know, that that's the motivation for the melodrama. Was that, mm -hmm. was that intentional in terms of... Well, I mean, you know, the, I guess, you know, this sort of interesting, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, so I made a movie, I made a play, and then I made a movie about these nuns and this priest, the church scandals, you know, the... Or, ripped uh, from the or, headlines. And, it, and the ripped in the headlines thing. And I wasn't interested in the church. I wasn't interested <laughs> in the church scandals. I wasn't interested whether the priest did it or not. And, uh, uh, but I was going to treat very seriously uh, and rigorously that subject in order to get where I wanted to go, which was basically to, to take the audience step by step to where I live. Uh, which is a place where I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I, I have my theories, I have my assumptions, I have my ideas, and I stitch those together into a little crazy quote that I hope to float across the river and not drown. But I don't know. So, uh, um, which is actually, I think, you know, I mean, I'm very personally at home with contradiction. 
I'm very personally uh, at home with the fact that I can never know for certain, and yet I want to live a, an authoritative life. I want to live boldly. I want to step forward in a, in a bold way. I want to act if I feel there's an action that needs to be performed. And yet all of this constantly informed by my deep belief, which does not interfere with this aspiration, that I don't know what's going on or if I'm right about any of it or if I should ever do anything. <laughs> And when you got the script, did you <laughs> <laughs> did you have a similar uh, set of belief systems? <laughs> I mean, was this a, was this what appealed to you about uh, the project? Was the sense of not knowing? <laughs> uh, well, I think that debate. I think that debate. Because uh, I, I think. Um, well, what did you? I'll put it another way. What did you when you received? Uh, you get offered everything in the universe. What was it about this? Um, script that particularly, or project, complete, particularly uh, was appealing to you? Well, I mean, because I had seen the play, uh, it was different. It was a different experience uh, getting, getting a call from John and ultimately him telling me that he'd like me to play this part because I hadn't imagined ever playing it. So I, I truly, up to that point, had taken it in as a viewer, as one of you, an audience member watching it, taking it in. And that's an interesting thing, because that doesn't, that doesn't happen pretty much ever. And uh, so I had all these feelings and thoughts and assumptions in my head about what I had seen, you know? And, and I, too, at the end of the play, the first time I saw it, was like, you shouldn't have bit your nails. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Because like, like yeah. yeah. I remember Brian went, went to bite his nails. I was like, guilty. <laughs> and I, and I, <laughs> that kind of thing. I, I remember having that completely, you know. Yeah. And then, and then remember, then remember watching my friend do it all. And Brian was, they were all so good. But I remember having those same things. So, which is part of the, I think, part of what's great about watching it. All the things that happen to you, all the things you project onto it, so fully and so with such certainty, really. And then you walk out and you start to question it. Because that's what happens. Because then when he offered me the part, then I started thinking about it, and I didn't think about those things. I immediately started thinking about what John was just talking about. I immediately started, when, once I realized that I might be put in his shoes, I thought, oh, well, that's a whole other ball of wax. You know what I mean? And it opened up everything. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this isn't about that, that mm -hmm. thought you had that one time in the theater, or the many thoughts you had while you were watching it. And then I knew I had to kind of move that aside. And, and I think I'm very uncomfortable living in uncertainty. I do. <laughs> I, think, I think John is more at home, probably, than I am. Uh -huh. But I'm, I'm living with it all day long. Uh -huh. Do you know, I, 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 I think being an artist is about saying I don't know, ultimately. Um, and, uh, and I'm not very comfortable with that part. And, I, and so. There was something, so I knew that this taking on this job was going to be uh, worth it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, all that stuff, you kind of go like, yeah, I'll do that. That's, that's, that's something I'm going to be able to show up and want to do well, you know. Did you find this difficult to play? Did you find this character difficult to play? Um, I, th I think just uh, doing something well is difficult. I, it's a, my lame answer to it because I think, yeah, some parts are, I think are easier to get inside of than others. And, but ultimately doing it well when on the day when you're there, it's very tricky. And, uh, and you got to, the, the amount of, that's why I say will, it really comes down to will, concentration, will, focus, you know, all the work is before. And so, to, just to do it well. Um, but um, it was really decisions. It's just how to, how to get away from what we were talking about earlier about the story that's so hot. And like, what is it? What, what makes him up? What drives him? What, what is, when he wakes up in the morning, what's he trying to do? Mm -hmm. Why is he there? You know, th that stuff was the difficult stuff. Like, to really think about that. Because you have to fill all that in in order to walk into this story and have people watch these very real people so they're free to uh, project their stuff onto them. Because if you don't, you know, if it's not, if they're not fully fleshed out, people, they're not mysterious. 
Do you know what I mean? If you, if you haven't done all that stuff, they're just not mysterious enough. Mm -hmm. And so you can kind of take it easy watch it. I would imagine mm -hmm. seeing a bad production or a bad performance, would you probably make your decision so early, or I don't know, maybe. But uh, that's what I thought, just filling all that in. And you did have a conversation where you um, told him what you think is the truth. I would never characterize that conversation okay. in that way. No, no, uh, no. OK, I'm so sorry. I, I said to. Yet again, <laughs> I'm just losing it. <laughs> um, I, I asked Philippia, I said, do you want to know a backstory for this a character? Backstory. You notice the, the use of the indefinite article. I, I'm very, yes, I'm uh, so sorry. And, uh, I apologize uh, deeply. He said, he said uh, yes, I would. And so uh, I said, oh, I'll come out in the hall. And I took him out in the hall, and I told him, uh, this backstory, and I said, "Does that work for you?" Out he in said, the hall. Out in the, he said, "Does that?" <laughs> I said, "Does that work for you?" And he said, "Yeah, actually, that, that, that does work for me. That's good." But next time, you don't have to take me out in the hall. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> That's a. But that, that was about something else. You told me the backstory. We made them go out in the hall. When you no. told me, no, we were in the room. I was. We were right across the table. Oh, okay. And you told me. You told me the idea of the backstory, which was very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and and then and then there was another time when you said. I need to talk to you out in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> and you told me out in the hallway, and you told me something again very helpful well, that was. And then I said, because I was scared. Because I remember you saying, I want to talk to you out in the hallway. And I thought, oh, this is it. I really fucked up. <laughs> Mr. Hoffman? <laughs> well, that's but, what I was going to uh, say. And you were filming, actually. You weren't filming at the school you went to. That was just for. We shot the exterior at the school that I went to. The church school that I went to is in the film. And the kids were all lined up outside like they were when I was a kid. Wow. And we shot on the street I grew up on and uh, shot on rooftops and alleyways I played in. So there was a lot of it there. Yeah. Was that very emotional for you in any way? Uh, I'm not sure. Of course. But you're not the kind of uh, uh, going home and seeing my valley again kind of thing. It was more, uh, <laughs> it's the valley. Ah, Jesus, God. Your valley? Uh, you know, like in Scotland or something. It wasn't like that, you know. It's, it's the East Bronx. It's kind of a different thing, you know? Ah, oh, there, there's the garbage. <laughs> the burned out oh, hole know. in the wall that I played in. 